Hi, my name is Justin Hayes Jones, and uh, I'm a Scala programmer and interested in functional programming. And this is the first video on my new YouTube channel, Functional Justin. So today we're going to talk about some new Scala 3 features. We're going to talk about enums and um, significant white space, removing braces, and um, the new implicit syntax, and also context functions. All right, let's get started. So what I'm going to talk about is, um, like I said, some new Scala 3 things. And I'll put all, all of these links in the uh, video description. And the first thing we're going to look at is enums. So the way we'll do this is I've written a little program here um, using all Scala 2 features, but these are all compatible with Scala 3. So I can compile and run this using Dotty, the, uh, the new Scala 3 compiler. So what this program does is it's an expression evaluator, so we can give it a, a tree of expressions, and then we're going to write an eval function that can uh, recursively go through and evaluate the uh, expression to give you a final integer. So we use a sealed trait. Um, we have our case classes to represent um, each part of the data type. and We've, we've got four operations. We've got val, which just returns, represents a number. Uh, we've got add and multiply, which represents the operations of adding and multiplying. And then we've got var, which looks up a uh, number in a symbol table. right? So we can represent that with the m of type, which is going to be an environment, and it's going to be a map of string to int. So then we use a pattern match to go through it's going to look at each expression coming in and call a function depending on what type it is. So that's all straightforward. And you can see that it takes an implicit argument of the environment. Um, and that's because we don't want to go to the trouble of having to uh, explicitly pass this in to each function. So then you go to each function. Each function takes an expression, the implicit environment, and then in the case of add and multiply, it's going to recursively call a val to make sure that we uh, get down to an integer before we try to do the plus and the uh, multiply there. And then the handle var is the only function here that actually uses the symbol table. Um, so it just uses the get or else method, which means if it's in the symbol table, then we'll get that value. Otherwise, we'll just return zero by default. So this is just to avoid error handling. So if we wanted to, we could um, have an error represented when um, uh, the variable is missing. And one way to do that would be to return an either string or int instead of just an int, and then we can handle uh, can handle errors. But that's not really necessary to uh, show you what I'm going to show you. Uh, this is sort of the minimum viable uh, program to demonstrate the new features. Um, so here's an example expression. So we just built this up by hand. What we're doing here is something like um, z plus 30 plus multiplying x and y. Right. So it's a simple mathematical expression. Then all we need is to make an implicit instance of a symbol table. Right. So this has all the variables we need. And that will automatically get picked up when we call a val. So we can run the code now, and you can see that it evaluates to 400, which is indeed the right answer. So, you know, it's a fairly simple program. Deliberately so, just because this is a short video, and we want to see what Scala 3 can give us here. So the first thing we're going to do is talk about Scala enums. So... You might be thinking that enum is a strange thing to bring up for a program like this, but enums are extremely expressive now in, in Scala 3. So let's make an enum called expression 2. And enums are really easy to make, so you can just do a case statement, and then we can add the enums like this. And in fact, um, what we can do is directly uh, represent this kind of hierarchy of data types using enum, right? So we're going to just rewrite this like this.
and um, as a matter of fact it might be easier if I just do it this way so we can get rid of this and um, this is actually a, uh, equivalent to what we had before uh, we also need to import the expression um, which brings those things into scope now uh, another thing we need to do is just get rid of those so it may not be obvious um, why we can do this but um, essentially the enum lets you create uh, a sealed hierarchy of, of case classes which is exactly what we want here so we can just get rid of all this stuff and now we've got the equivalent of what we had before so now we should be able to compile and run and um, another thing you might want to do is you can actually delete the, 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 the braces so there's a few um, most of the time in, in Scala 3 in fact you can just delete uh, braces and um, now this isn't going to work um, because uh, it needs a little helper just to tell you that there's no braces in this case a colon um, but that's one thing you can do in fact we can even get rid of this one now I'm not saying it's a great idea to get rid of braces but it's going to be a matter of personal taste programming style whether you want to do it or not um, Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is look at the um, uh, significant white space we just kind of looked at, and now we're going to look at the new implicits. Uh, so now we have two things, using and given, and the way implicits used to work was everything was implicit. So when we provided the uh, environment here, when we provided this implicit variable, we used the implicit keyword. Uh, what we're going to use now is we're using the given keyword, which is saying I want to provide the uh, implicit type myself. And the syntax is slightly different. So you say given env as env. Um, so now we have an implicit variable. And this, um, in this case, it behaves exactly the same as the code we had before. The next thing we want to do is get rid of the other implicits. Um, there's a new keyword for where you actually use the implicit or where you declare the uh, implicit parameter instead of Im implicit it's now using so we can rename that one so for compatibility you can still use the implicit keyword around um, but for new code you should use these new ones so given provides the evidence for the an implicit and then using uh, defines the place where you're going to use it at the call site just make sure we didn't break anything so we're still all good so that's implicit now there's a there's a nice thing we can do here uh, using something called context functions so a context function is also related to the idea of implicit and what it defines is we'll make a new type here um, defines a function that takes an implicit argument of some kind so in this case it's going to be an environment and then it has this new syntax sort of like the function syntax and um, then it takes a return value so what we've declined what we've said here is um, with env is a type that represents a function that has some implicit parameter that is of type env and the function returns int so now what we can do is just simplify this function a bit we can change it to the width of env type and we can do the same to all of the functions below all right so we've we've simplified the code quite a bit um, by removing a bit more boilerplate so if you have a function say that um, we don't have an example here but if you have a function that wants to just pass the implicit along then um, there's never any need to actually declare the implicit and give it a name and all that kind of jazz handle var is the only function here that uses the environment so that's the only one that needs this name env and unfortunately it can't access env 
it is actually accessing it because it's using this implicit. But if this implicit wasn't in scope, it wouldn't be able to. And this is kind of a bad practice anyway. So what this should be doing is using uh, using an implicit variable that's been magically passed down from the initial call of uh, eval. So we don't know what it's called, but we do need to get hold of it. So the way we get hold of it is like this. We're going to create a, a variable called n. And we're going to summon it from the magic implicit land. So we'll just do summon env. So now we'll be sure that we've got the right one. So context functions um, are a little bit tricky to get your head around at first, but um, the, way, the way you need to think of them is that it eliminates boilerplate for passing implicits around. Um, essentially, you're going to benefit from this when you have um, an implicit that's passed all over the place, but it's only used in certain places. Uh, so you really, it really reduces the boilerplate of these functions that don't actually need to use the environment. And there's one final thing you can do. Uh, if you don't want to do this every time you need env, you know, maybe you have it in a few places, um, you can make a function that does that summoning for you. So that would look like this. Um, we'll call it summon env, but you would probably give it a shorter name. And this is going to also be a context function. So it's going to be something that takes an environment and returns an environment. So it essentially gets the environment from the implicit and gives it to you. And the way we'd implement that is just using summon env. So then we can get rid of this one. And we can just do summon env. And then that's it. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you.